What's up, YouTube? Uh, episode 38 with our friend, Mandy Sheehan. She's gonna be sharing a story um, about uh, foster care and how you can help out and just her story and how that's connected to foster care. We're excited to, to just share that. Um, also, um, Adina's not here, but we have Ashley, Jamie, and Tiana. Um, Tyler's not here. He hasn't been here in a while, right? Yeah, he's in yeah, here. He's usually volunteering on Wednesdays. Um, but anyways, guys, we're excited. Make sure that you look at the notes in this section on this podcast because you can actually find the website, how to support Mandy, how to support their nonprofit, and make sure you go follow them on Instagram and on, and on, and on Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, do you have a Twitter account? Almost. Yeah, Twitter. I mean, I, I think Instagram is the place to be, personally. What, what else is there? Instagram? Well, TikTok. Do you have a TikTok? Almost. We don't have a TikTok. I'm afraid of what would happen if we have a TikTok. TikTok. Anyways, uh, guys, make sure you go follow that. Uh, so, Mandy, we just look at each other. You, If you want to talk to people on YouTube, they, it's not that they don't matter. We just usually just talk like this, just, okay. just like a conversation. Um, she's the one that makes me nervous. I'm nervous for her. I don't know why. <laughs> Let me pull up the notes that I have. Um, actually, just the ending, because I forget the ending. So she says she forgets the vision, and I forget the ending. <laughs> and I said, I've said it 39, 38 times. Uh, wait for more episode, episode, what's that? Episode. Um, any questions, Andy, before we start? Um, can you edit things out? No. <laughs> <laughs> There's been times, what happened last week? Remember I started, I said, hey. Hey, YouTube. Hey, YouTube, and I was talking to them. And it was just, there's been a couple times that we recorded and right in the middle, it shuts off, and I forgot that we're recording on YouTube, and I just start, and now I'll start saying things that are like, <laughs> we're recording, I was like, oh yeah. Um, we said some things about my place of employment at one point, and I looked at, Etiana used to sit over there, so we said something, and I looked at Etiana, and I forgot <laughs> that the camera picked me up, and people cropped that out and sent it to me, going, bro, what were you saying here? I was like, thanks. <clears throat> Anyways, all right. Why do I get I <laughs> <You> know, <this laughs> interview yet? Okay. <clears throat> Let me see. Three, two. What's up, everybody? It's Mario from the Make More Consulting Podcast. Welcome back to episode 39. Actually, it's episode 38. <laughs> we'll just keep rolling. Um, excited that we have one of my friends here. I'll introduce her in just a second. But it's going to be an amazing time tonight because you actually get to help support something that matters. Not that every week doesn't matter, but something that's, <laughs> that you can support something that's going to make a difference in someone's life. So uh, we're going to be sharing that in just a second. But make sure that you go back and listen to um, episode 32 through 37 because that's the last book we did if you are just joining us. And if this is your very, very, very first time, episode one, make sure you go follow that. Uh, or go check that out. I keep saying follow. Go uh, listen to that. It tells you who we are, what we do, and what, we're, what we stand for and our why. Um, and uh, just glad that you guys are hanging out with us. And um, yeah, getting to just hear an amazing story tonight from one of our friends. And so um, this person, we when I moved down here 13 and a half years ago, we, uh, you're good, 13 and a half years ago, um, we started about the same time working for the same organization and she was over finance and um, it was a little um, intimidating because we never had, I didn't ever deal with budgets or anything like that and she was over finances and um, <clears throat> I do, I could probably tell, I should probably tell her the story about what I thought about her. I think I have. Yeah, tell me. So, um, so actually I'll just introduce Mandy. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So Mandy and I met about 13 and a half years ago, but I remember going to Darren and Adina's house. So Adina's usually here. She's not here tonight. Um, Etiana, Ashley, and Jamie are here. But uh, 13 and a half years ago, I went to Darren and Adina's house, and I said, um, I think Mandy hates me. <laughs> and then Adina <laughs> goes, what do you mean? I said, I just, I think we're in meetings. And I was like, I, I think she hates me. And Adina goes, why? I go, I don't know. She just, she just looks like she hates me. And Dana goes, no, you're fine. And so Darren was like, well, no, what did you do? And I said, I didn't do anything. And then he, I go, I just think Andy hates me. He goes, you just gotta get to know her. So over the course of 
maybe a couple of years that we worked together. I got to know you, got to know your husband and your kids. And uh, it's been awesome. So we've known each other for 13 and a half years. Yeah. And you have, tell us about your family. You have, just go, go from the oldest to the youngest. Okay, well, just going back to that point. Yeah. Most people feel that about me at the beginning. I'm not <laughs> sure why. <laughs> I don't know, but I'm, I'm actually really nice. Yeah, you are. So, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so I have five kids. My husband and I, uh, we have been high school sweethearts. So mm -hmm. we got married after high school. And, um, moved to Texas, and we have two daughters and three sons. Our oldest is 21, 20, 18, 10, and 8. Wow. Yeah. So how long have you been married? Uh, you will be married 25 years this October. Dang. Um, how long have you all been together? Um, about, gosh, 30 almost. So I just was trying to see how long it took Ryan to ask her to marry him because <laughs> it took me seven years to ask Jamie. Well, so yeah, I was, yeah too, but. let's see. Okay, so now you're going to make me do the math. But, <clears throat> um, did y'all yeah. meet your senior year? Or what's the age? We difference? met our freshman year. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. But we did not start dating until our senior year. So we graduated. Actually, no, that's a lie. We graduated in 94. We started dating in 93. Okay. Married in 96. Wow. So, three years. Wow. That's pretty, that's pretty awesome. So, yeah. 25 years. Yeah. October what? 26. Okay, cool. Well, happy early anniversary. Thanks. Um, so five kids yeah. and I, I told them last week on the podcast, you had two, um, D one former sports. Yes. And your, your oldest was a volleyball player at Oregon state. Yeah. And then Sydney was a soccer player at Oklahoma. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The OU. Um, yeah. but I'm just glad that she came back to, um, the brighter side of things because they both go to UT now, which is amazing. University yeah. of Texas. They love it there too. <laughs> yeah. Do you like having them closer? Yes. Okay. And then your son is a senior, correct? Yes, he's a senior in high school. And is he, uh, what's what's his plan, do you know? Not that he needs a plan, I'm just curious. He would love to also go to UT. Sweet. So he is uh, working towards hopefully getting in there. Mm -hmm. uh, does he know what he wants to study? Finance, economics, something Dang. along that line. Okay. Yeah. So he, yeah, to me, he seems pretty. He's pretty smart. He's smart. Yeah, yeah, he's very smart. Um, so guys, if you don't, if you're not watching YouTube, Mandy told me she was really nervous, and so I just want you to know you're good. Like, hopefully, you're getting relaxed. Yeah, I so, feel good. Okay, so Mandy, uh, where I know you said that you guys moved to Texas. Tell everyone where you moved from. Well, we grew up in Nebraska. Yeah. What city? Um, we grew up in Hooper, which okay. is a small town, um, about an hour outside of Omaha. Okay. So I did not always live there. Ryan grew up there. I moved there my freshman year of okay. high school. Um, so that's where I met. Mm -hmm. Went to school. Then we moved to Kansas City. Lived there. Wow. And then, um, yeah, then moved to Texas. We graduated from college and looked for some places where we could move. Yeah. That was warm. And you, you picked, I'm trying to think, where did, oh, y'all y'all used to live by Darren. You know, was that your first that was not our first. We actually okay. moved here closer to where you live. In really? That, your, that the north, neighborhood? Yeah. That where, where, yeah, our former boss used to live over there. Yeah. Our, yeah, yeah. Okay. So we lived over there, rented a house for a couple of years, and then moved to Cedar Park. And then wow. moved back to Cedar. So we've been up in this area the whole time. So you guys have watched it grow pretty much, this whole area. Yes. Man. So what was Kansas City like? I love Kansas City. Really? Yes. Because I visited there. That's where the Art Institute of Kansas City was that I had had an offer to go there and then that was that was not a fan of the weather well that's the thing it you know it snows it, it ices but it wasn't much different than nebraska mm. for weather but after we graduated that's when we were like where could we move so we looked at california or texas because those were the um kind of the upcoming bath bomb yeah and ryan was in that you know business mm -hmm. so i was an accountant so i was like well i can work anywhere yeah and so we ended up he got an offer here in austin yeah and your husband's a he's a cool guy and, and i had dinner with him not too long ago and um yeah just a just a cool smart dude i love that he thinks leadership too yes maxwell a lot of maxwell uh is he a maxwell coach or he served he, um, he would like to be at some point i don't know that he's 
He might be, you know, actually I think he is maybe licensed too yeah, because he does that through work. Yeah, because he did yes. our he yeah. did training for us. Sure. And yes. I mean he did an amazing job. He's he's a cool guy. Um he's letting his hair grow out, which is yes. interesting. So yeah. you like his hair growing yes. out? It's just it's so weird because I hadn't seen him for a while and then I see him and I'm like, man, Ryan's hair is, is long. So um those of you guys on the podcast, make sure you go check out Mandy Sheehan at on Instagram and Facebook and then we're going to talk about her nonprofit and you guys go follow her. She has a goal of reaching a hundred people on Instagram and, and Facebook. And I told her that we're going to help by taking them over that threshold tonight. Um, so yeah, so Mandy, tell us, um, so you have five kids and this all, so, so how did all this, um, foster care come about? Cause when I worked with you, I had no idea you guys were even thinking that, uh, your kids at the time, I didn't have Sydney and, and Maddie in my youth ministry yet. Um, but uh, when you guys started doing that and it started to kind of infiltrate the people that were around us, because you guys fostered Adina, Alicia, um, and then some other mutual friends. And I was like, man, but it all started with you guys. I know you guys have been on the cover of like magazines. You're like the, you, you have a story and that's what we're trying to get to tonight so that people can help hear your story and what you're doing now. So how did all that start? Tell me where it started. Well, <clears throat> um, that's a good question. So I would say back when my kids were pretty little, mm -hmm. you know, we, they wanted more siblings mm -hmm. and we were kind of like, no, you know, we can't do that. And then, um, they just kept, you know, being like, I think this would be a great idea. Like, let's have a baby. And, um, and then we ended up seeing some friends of ours that, started to foster mm -hmm. and we kind of started walking through that with them like kind of on the outside but seeing them be successful in fostering and then also becoming aware of the need of foster yeah. care yeah um, i feel like if you don't really know people that are involved in that mm -hmm. um it's kind of easy to miss so um once we kind of knew the need in the area and you know across the united states of foster care and adoption we talked about it for a long time and it took us a couple years before we decided to go ahead and try it because of all of the reasons that everyone says no. Yeah, which are maybe a couple of them. I mean, you know, how's it going to affect our family? Mm -hmm. um, what if something happens and it goes wrong? Um, how much work is it going to be? How hard is it going to be? Yeah. Um, the, the one that everyone says is, what if I love them too much? It's going to be too hard to let them go. Yeah. Um, and That's so that, that has to be tough. It is tough. Yeah. And it is so hard because you, you have to love them mm -hmm. enough to take care of them. Yeah. Like they need to be cared for yeah. because, you know, uh, Karen Purvis talks about them, you know, and, um, I, she's amazing and her uh, organization of Empowered Connect through TCU is, is great. Um, she talks about kids from hard places Yeah, and you know, that is the case. Unfortunately, that's why they're there. And so that it does make it, you know, they do have a lot of things that they're struggling with. And, mm -hmm. you know, that does affect, you know, all of the people, but um, not always negatively. It just is a little bit harder. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes a lot harder. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Like sometimes yeah. it's a lot harder. Okay. Um, but with that, we decided to go ahead and we'll just going to try it and mm -hmm. kind of see what happens. And so uh, we got our first placement. And um, it was a little girl and a little boy and um, it was a baby. And I mean, long story short, they stayed with us for a couple of weeks and they ended up going back with their grandparents. And it was so hard. Yeah. It was so hard. How long did they stay with you? They stayed with us for about two weeks. And wow. what was hard was the baby was sick. And um, Man, he was weeks. sick with like MRSA staff mm -hmm. is what they thought it was. Um, it ended up just being regular staff. But while we had him, they thought it was Mercia, which, mm. you know, I didn't know anything about Mercia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sounds really bad, yeah. you know. Yeah. And, um, so you had to, every time you change his diaper, you had to, you know, take him to the bathroom mm -hmm. area, bleach everything afterwards, yeah. and, you know, wear gloves and all yeah. of the things. So, and then he cried a lot. Man. And then the little girl was, you know, confused. She was two years old. She doesn't know why she doesn't have her family anymore. And then, um, but, you know, she gets to go back to the grandparents and, at the end of that, we always went to this restaurant we liked and we would kind of reconnect and be like, whoo, you know, like we did it mm -hmm. and um, kind of take a quick break 
and then we were like, do we want to do this again? And so we just kept doing it. Wow. What what's, what was the restaurant? Just curious. Um, what is it? Uh, I was about to say, please don't say her name. Oh, well, Hardeen is our go-to. Okay. Every week. Okay. Like, we're probably there more <laughs> than once a week. We love Hardeen. Okay. Okay. What is the, it's by Randall's Cedar Park. Oh, Brooklyn? No. Oh. Um, Cedar Park. Uh, on the corner. Yeah. McGorry's. McGorry's. What's McGorry's? I've never McGorry's. heard of it. Majoris. Majoris? Yeah. Well, so it's like you... a, isn't it like Italian or? Yeah, it's like, wow. they, they have I like. I guess I've never even been there. It's like a fun place. They have like a pool table. They have like arcade games. Wow. You know, it's fun for kids. They have wings and like, they have like the best cheese bread. Okay. Are yeah, the wings good? Oh, yeah. They're okay. pretty good. Okay. Yeah. So, and it was really close to where we live. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's where it is where we went. Okay. And at that point. There were not very many restaurants no, around not out here there, there you know, exactly. so it was kind of where you went. So two weeks, man, and you saying that was hard, just okay. two weeks. Yeah, that was our first one. Then <clears throat> they got harder after that. Mm -hmm. um, so they were, you know, another set of kids we had for nine months, and then they were able to go back to their grandparents too. So yeah. uh, we had some kids for a week some kids for as long as nine months mm -hmm. and uh, we did that for five years Golly. I was telling Jamie so I did a tour of the US with orphans from seven different countries when I was 20 21 22 so after the year was up I'll never forget it was just like a botched um, goodbye because I had to get on my plane and I didn't get to say bye to them and what was crazy was so I traveled for a year with them and stayed in hotels. They went to host homes, but we, we traveled the year with them and they're orphans. And they had like three um, like people that traveled with them from their countries, right? So they were Burma, Uganda, Nepal, India, all those different countries. So when I traveled with them, the year was up and they left and I got back on the plane. And I, to this day, I, I tell them like, there's a part of you that it dies and I, I got pissed. I didn't know how to, because I didn't know the stages of grief at that point. I just knew I was angry inside going, why do I feel this way? Because I'm not going to see these kids ever again. Like they're on the other side of the world. And now obviously we have Facebook and some of them are our friends and they always call me uncle. So they'll always say, hey, Uncle Mario. And so, but what was crazy was to think that they're gone. And that was a whole year. And, but they didn't live with me. I mean, we stayed in the same hotels every now and then. But for you guys to be changing diapers, to be doing that for five years with different children, Man, that's, yeah, seriously, that's got to be tough. It's really hard. It's really hard when they leave. It's very sad. Mm -hmm. um, I've never heard of any updates on any of them yeah. since, you know, and we have pictures, mm -hmm. you know, we still talk about them pretty often. Yeah. Um, but I would say to my kids, because they were like, it's, you know, it's so sad and you know, everyone, and I just was like, you can be sad for, you know, as long as you want, you know, it, yeah. it's sad. You know, you are losing someone that was important to you. Um, but we just kind of said, I think our I think our family just kind of understood like that we were there to, to care for them while their parents were getting better. Yeah. You know, and getting healthy or to where they could go back to their family. Yeah. And um, you know, whether the time was really short or longer, uh, we just really enjoyed those moments with them and like it was fun. Yeah. So as an adult, you're saying that was tough. I mean, most of your kids were under the age of 10, I would think, because I still hadn't had them in my classes. Yeah, when we started. Yeah, because I'm thinking, like, our girls, if they had someone here and leaving, I wonder how that affects their heart, their little heart, and processing loss. I mean, in the, in the end, I would think they're becoming a better person, but you're having to learn how to let go, which yes. is crazy. Yes. So before we go on, um, what did so when you talk about statistics i don't know if you know i mean i'm asking you if you don't that's fine but boys versus girls more boys than girls are about the same do you what, it is what do you more know? boys versus girls okay yes and i don't know what the statistic is on that but yes okay i would assume that i mean just i uh, know we did some work with switch camp uh in austin um and they took us to the was it the boys and girls home over there in uh, georgetown and we kind of helped but they showed us what families needed and then they told us about the older kids as they get older most of them are boys rarely girls and so I was just curious um, 
Man, what was the oldest in that time frame of those five years? What was the oldest that you do you know? Um, the oldest that came to us was a uh, little boy. He was thirty. Okay, so they were mainly little kids. Yes. Okay, and that's I mean I guess because your kids were saying they wanted a little yes. sibling or whatever. Yes. Did you ever think about getting someone older? We did actually think about it. Yeah. Um, I think just kind of how our family was set up and like there's so many rules on like yep. rooms and things like that yeah. that um, it really had to be a younger group mm -hmm. of siblings. Okay. But I think all ages are amazing and people are out there for yeah. all of them. Yeah, no they doubt. They need to be for sure. Agreed, agreed. And so you do that for five years um, and then what happens? Well, in that time, we were placed with um, our two sons now, yeah. and um, they went through the foster care system, mm -hmm. and then we ended up adopting them. So our 10-year-old Gabe, and then our 8-year-old Jameson. Yeah, so um, <laughs> I laugh because, <laughs> I, I mean, I know both of them, Yeah. and I've had run-ins with both. Not, I mean, I've had run-ins with Gabe, because to me, man, I, I, I see, I see a, the sweetest boy, right? And then it's nothing to say about Jameson. I'm just saying when I know Jameson, I see a little bit of me and my 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 youngest because he just is ready to go. Yes. Like he's he's what what can I do? What can I get into? Yes. Let's go. Yes. Um, and so, <laughs> what can you tell us if anything about? Uh, I guess either one. Let's start with Gabe. I mean, what what drew you to say I want to adopt him? Well, he became adoptable. Okay. Where the other children that we had had went back to their family. So they told you pretty much firsthand, hey, these are not, they're not going to be adopted. They're not going to be adoptable. Well, as you go through the foster care mm -hmm. program, um, it comes to an end where someone in the family is either able to take them mm -hmm. and, you know, that's the court decides or someone in the family is not able to take them and that's all decided through the courts. Um, and so for their cases, they mm -hmm. were, there was no one that was able to take them, that they consider safe to take them. Okay. So two feelings real quick. Yeah. When the kid, let's go back to the first five years. When the court decides that someone's able to take them, the feelings you had of, was it ever like, I know they're not going back into a good environment? Sure. Okay. Yeah. How did that make you and Ryan feel? I mean, it's hard. Yeah. It's hard, but I think in that you just have to know that, you know, at that point we're not the ones making those decisions. Yeah. And we just, you know, really hoped that they would be safe where they were and that there were yeah. people that could take care of them. Yeah, because sometimes I hear of families wanting to fight the system, but that's the way it is. I and mean, it, the system is broken, mm -hmm. which, yeah. you know, we all know. We all know. There that. are, yeah. you know, things that, that, that they're really trying to change and there's so many people that are amazing <clears> in the system but an, as an overall it needs a lot of help and so yeah. I think that the people that are in charge are trying to make it so that kids can be safe but yeah unfortunately that doesn't always happen man um so Gabe becomes adoptable yes how do you tell your kids that and how did that I mean how did that make you guys feel yeah, well, you know, when we went into foster care, like I said, we were really unsure about what, like, what the process was going to look like for yeah. our family. And we kind of just, every time we got a new sibling group, we said, okay, we'll do this and we'll see how it is mm -hmm. at the end. Like when they end up going back with their family, we'll reevaluate and see if we want to keep going. Um, with Gabe, same thing, because yeah. we just assumed that he would go back to his family. And um, that was not the case. And so we just said, Hey guys, you know, what do you think? And everyone was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. And, um, so Gabe's, so Gabe's background, what is he, is he Mexican? Is yes. he not? Yes. Okay. And I say Mexican cause I'm Mexican and people are going to go, you should say Hispanic. Dude, I was brought up just saying Mexican. So anyway, so can you say any of his background? Like what, what, or what his story is? Um, I don't really share very okay. much of his story, yeah. um, just because I feel like that's kind of for him to share okay. at some point. But um, I just, the reason I ask is because yeah. I love, or the race side of it, is because I love, I mean, me, my wife, she's white, I'm Mexican, my whole family, I think, all my siblings are married to white people. Yes. And so, but when I see a the family that's mixed with like Gabe and Jameson, yeah. to me, I love that because it shows... I, I don't know. I think my generation and younger, I think the younger generation than us is starting to see that, hey, skin doesn't, 
who cares? I know racism, I think, is taught, right? It's, it's, you learn that. But like our girls and, and your boys, I think they, I think and I hope that uh, they start to see like, oh, wow, that's, they're just, we're just kids. We're not, there is no skin color. So I love seeing Gabe and um, Jameson with your, with your family. So anyways. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, yep. Uh, Gabe is uh, Hispanic. Mm -hmm. Mexican. Yeah. And Jameson is biracial. He is uh, white and black. Awesome. Okay. Yes. And so I feel like, um, you know, for, for us, you know, we um, know that that's their, you know, their background and mm -hmm. uh, we try to help them learn about that. Um, and of course, you know, there are still times where people are wondering, yeah. you know, yeah. um, and that's okay. Yeah, it's yeah, okay. Yeah. It's not, it's wondering is, is fine. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, anything else yes. is not fine. Yeah. Um, what about, uh, what about them asking you guys questions? Does that come up? Sure. Often? Yes. Yeah. Man. They, they are, especially now kind of where they are in their age now, they're very curious. Uh, they want to know like what mm -hmm. we know about, you know, their stories and, you know, uh, information and, you know, why things happen. And, um, and we just share with them what we can that's, <clears> you know, age appropriate for, yeah. you know, for where they are. And um, we try to teach them about, you know, their heritage and, um, you know, their family and, yeah. you know, as much as we can, as much as we know. And fortunately, um, a lot of that information we just don't know. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, those, those boys are, those, yeah, they're awesome. I think, I think they are. <laughs> they are awesome. Yeah. They're, they're so sweet. They're such great boys. Mm -hmm. Um, but man, Gabe is so funny and he just loves sarcasm. That's awesome. Loves it. Yeah. And Jameson, he, <laughs> he is so sweet. He loves animals. He yeah. is so smart with like, you know, like he knows everything about like ocean life and dinosaurs. And, That's awesome. Um, but he is, uh, he's busy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just remember one time he came into a program that was happening to pick up the boys and uh, someone said, Hey, this happened tonight with Jameson. You go, yep, that sounds like him. I was like, yeah, and Mandy knows, like she knows. So, yes. Um, so real quick, so you're getting into foster care, you're going to adopt Gabe and Jameson, or you do. What happens where you, you guys start to get some recognition and the people around you are asking you guys about foster care and all of a sudden people around you are starting to foster. Yes. So, and I, I think it started with you guys. So how did you, is it just the relationships y'all were surrounded with that you said, Hey, you guys should try this or what? I guess like when you're in something, you begin to talk about it more and more, right? You're yes. excited about it. So can you speak to that? Just like, I know you guys were on the cover of what magazine you can brag a little bit. So. I, it was, it was a, a local church magazine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I didn't um, know that. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. They, um, and then through our, um, foster care agency, mm -hmm. um, we went through Starry out of Round yeah. Rock, and uh, they would put us in some of their yeah, because you, know, you guys were like pamphlets. And yeah, like yeah, that. that's awesome. So, um, your friends around you, can you speak to that a little bit? Yes, for sure. <laughs> I think that that's just one of those things, kind of, kind of like all things. You know, you see somebody doing something, and you know, like you said, you start to become passionate about you know what you're doing and mm -hmm. seeing, uh, becoming more aware of you know, the, the need in the community. And, um, then our friends, you know, they were super helpful to us. I feel like yeah. that was part of what made us successful in being a foster and adopt family, because we did have a lot of friends and family that supported us. Yeah. And so while they were doing that, I think they probably had the same thoughts, like, well, we see the need, let's yeah. try it. Let's mm -hmm. see what we can do. And then yeah. they kind of went on that same path. So it's basic, I mean, it's what we said about leadership is making sure you surround yourself with the like-minded people, not, not yes men or yes women, but people that are going to support you and that will probably say, Hey, this probably isn't a good idea. Did anyone ever say that to you? Yes. Okay. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but either way, that's, that's cool that you have people that support you, kind of your group, your, your tribe, whatever you want to call them. Um, so before we go on to what you're doing now, um, I want to ask you. So at any point when you were younger, did you think you would be doing this? No. So how did your heart catch up or how did your heart and passion, how did that, how that, that, that switch get flipped? Because there's things that, again, most of us are like, I had no idea to be passionate about this. 
but I think internally God does something in every one of us that goes, you're going to be passionate about something at some point. And somehow there's dots connected that, that make up who you are and make up who I am and everyone in here that are connected and passionate about certain things, but it doesn't come to fruition until later. So does that make sense? How did, yes. tell me a little bit about that. Well, I mean, I think I didn't know anything about adoption or foster care. Mm -hmm. I didn't know anybody um, growing up that was doing anything like that. And so I think I just didn't know. Um, I know people now that they are like, well, I always knew I wanted to adopt. And mm -hmm. I think that's amazing. I just didn't have that at that point. Um, and then we had three kids that were, uh, we had them, you know, we got married and then we had them close together. Mm -hmm. And so when that happened, you know, we adopted Gabe and, um, he and, you know, our kids are far apart and Jameson, you know, mm -hmm. there, there's a gap in there. And I think that was one of the things we were like, wow, you know, that's, that's, that's yeah. a lot of years, <laughs> yeah. you know, in between yeah. there. But, um, yeah, I think that, you know, just over that time, people will kind of just start, you know, following you with that. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. So, and I'm going to take a little bit of a detour as far as to talk about leadership and like passion. Of, it's in the same realm of what we're talking about, but. I, I guess, like, what would you tell people right now? Because there's going to be people who listen to you that aren't passionate about foster care, but they're passionate about something in their lives. So what would you tell someone who has a calling internally and they're feeling that nudge to do something and they just haven't jumped? Yes. Well, I feel like for me, um, to kind of go back to your question to follow up with this one, um, you know, I feel like God just was saying, I, I remember him saying specifically, like, a feeling like I, I wanted a baby. Mm -hmm. And then I went to my husband and I was like, hey, so, <laughs> um, you know, we kind of took care of that. So yeah. we can't actually yeah. have a baby. Yeah. But, you know, how do you think we could get one? And he was like, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> and, um, and so we kind of, it was, it was very confusing, mm -hmm. I feel like, for me in that time. Because I was like, well... You know, but I felt like that's what God was kind of saying. And so that was kind of the beginning. And so when I feel like in my time mm -hmm. learning about how God works with me, I kind of want, when I feel like he's prompting me to do mm -hmm. something, I kind of want it to happen like right away. Yeah. Because now I'm like, okay, well, let's, let's do go. it. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. And then it, it doesn't normally happen that way for me. It kind mm -hmm. of builds up over time. Yeah. And um, so that was kind of, how the process happened for me a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. And I think just, I always say the waiting is the hardest yeah. for all things. Yeah. For me, um, once you kind of feel like you maybe know where you're going or what you're supposed to be doing and kind of waiting for that next step or that next thing to kind of open up. But I feel like if you have a prompt or something, it's, for me, it's always going to be scary. Yeah. Um, especially when it's, big or you don't really know and you don't know how it's going to affect yourself or everybody else in your family or yeah. all the people but i say you should go for it that's awesome and if you guys don't know i don't know if we talked about this much but adina is really good friends with mandy and adina has two two three three foster kids that she adopted yeah. and then adina's sister alicia uh we talked about casey alicia lost her husband casey it was tyler and i doing an interview uh, talking about him uh but they have two Yes. Brother and sister, correct? Yeah. Are they twins or they, they just... No, they're just they're, a year, like yeah. a little under a year apart. So Casey and Alicia, Adina and Darren, and then we have some other mutual friends that are in yes. that realm that, again, adopted, which is awesome because it it changes a child's life, but it also changes a family's life. Yes. At dynamic. So, um, so you're fostering, you're living life with Jameson and uh, Gabe. Um, and so... Let's fast forward to day where this is what I want people to hear, like how we can support you because you're going to give back to families, correct? So tell us, yes. tell us where you're at right now. Okay. So, uh, we started the nonprofit okay. and it is called Chyla Branch. How do you spell that? <laughs> it does not spell like it sounds. Okay. It spells T-E-A-G-H-L-A-C-H branch. Say it again. T E A. No, no, say oh. the word. Yeah. Shylock Ranch. Shylock Ranch. Yes. And it is Irish okay. for family. Awesome. 
Yes. I did not know that. Yes. So any Irish so, people listening, you all should know that. Irish Gaelic, yes. So the clan is, uh, they say it's a more like a smaller unit where family is like the larger unit of the word. Okay. And so I felt like that was kind of all inclusive. That's cool. As the family word. And so we really liked it. Um, yeah. So that's what it is. But yes, Shiloh. Nice. And I was like, well, everyone's going to have to learn how to say it. Yes. And spell it. <laughs> but, so you came up with that. And so, yes. yeah, go ahead. So we started the nonprofit. We, um, during COVID, that was one of the things that I felt like I had more time. Yeah. And so I did the paperwork and uh, we submitted it and it came back and it was a yes and it was so exciting. So. So hold on, I'm gonna go back on my soapbox for just a second and talk leadership. When you're in a freaking predicament, do not let the situation dictate you. You dictate the situation, which means you're locked up for a year. And I guess, I mean, you can get sick or whatever, but what I'm saying is when you, if we all went back into quarantine, some of us, again, I get it, there's fear involved, but don't allow your situation to dictate you. Where you come in on the other side, you go, crap, I should have done something with that time. You dictate the situation, you dictate what you can take out of that and go, you know what, I'm gonna learn in this time. I'm gonna get closer to my relationships. I'm gonna work harder. I'm gonna read books, whatever it is. So think about what you want to come out of whatever you're going into, whatever storm, whatever situation, whatever trip you're taking. Again, just like Mandy had said, and what's interesting is our stories and that are pretty much similar, meaning that's that's exactly when we started doing this because there was so much downtime and people were freaking out and panicking which i get it we've never been through that but you take the opportunity to go i'm gonna jump but what's funny is on this side of it some people are going why would you launch a business in the middle of covid and like hey it's worked for a lot of people yes. so anyway sorry but i just want people to understand that the leadership lesson in that is don't fold when things are getting tough because um you can learn through that and get better. So COVID hits, yes. you get every, all the paperwork back. Yeah. And so what is it? It's a branch? Yes. So the thing is, is Ryan and I, my husband, we have kind of talked about how for a long time, like wouldn't it be amazing if we could have a place where, or if there was a place that would help kind of support the foster and adopt parents. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of programs that support the foster children, which is very needed mm -hmm. and super important. Uh, but there's not very many that support the parents. And I feel like the parents are, you know, they're the ones that are also like tired and, you know, overwhelmed and they mm -hmm. need, you know, some support also. Yeah. So we were like, it, it would be so cool to like have a place, like I've always wanted to have a bed and breakfast. And I was like, it would be so cool to have a place where we could like have them out and you know have like this really awesome relaxing time and yeah. um, and then help also build that community for them. That's awesome. So it's for the parents. Yes. Is our kids allowed or is it just parents? Just parents. That's awesome. And then where's it at? It is just outside of Fredericksburg. So south of Austin. Yes. Awesome. Off of thirty five or where like a, No, it's off of two ninety. Two ninety. Oh wow! And what is what does it consist of right now? Is it just land? Yes. I saw Ryan on a tractor or something. Yes. So it is just land. Um, there's some deer out there, mm -hmm. and um, we have a tractor. And I feel like when we um, were out there, we're like, okay. So he loves to drive his tractor. He just got yeah. it back. He got it fixed. So it's back. He's driving that around. He named it Tyler. Nice. <laughs> Why? <laughs> well, he listens to Tyler Childers. Okay. A lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so he named it Tyler. Yes, he okay. named it Tyler. And um, we have a like a side by side because mm -hmm. everyone loves to drive that around. That's awesome. And um, we have a well, so we have some water, and we have electricity poles, but, but nothing like you can't yeah. use electricity for anything. Yeah. And so, and then we have a water tank, so we can get the water to the deer. Sweet. Um, so, do you have horses? No. Okay. Where did I see y'all ride? Did I see y'all riding horses? No. Okay, I thought I did. Maybe I didn't. Maybe one y'all. Um, and then we have we just put a camper out there. Okay. Um, so we bought that and put it out there so that we could. Uh, it's far from our house. It's mm -hmm. about two hours, mm -hmm. uh, one way. Yeah. And so now we're able to stay out there overnight, and so we can get a little more stuff done. Sweet. And do all of you go out there to work? 
Um, yeah, like the kids will come out, uh, like actually work, like yeah. during, uh, Brian has done some calls out there. Yeah, he has done awesome. some days out there and done some calls out there. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. So how many acres? It's 80 acres. Wow. Okay. So real quick, don't go all the way in here, but like as far as like big, big dreams yet, I'm going to ask you two questions or okay. two, two year ranges in five years. What would you want on that land? What do you see happening out there in five years? Okay, in five years. If we're, we walked out there in five yes. years. So when you come in the gate, you're going to see a big pond mm -hmm. where you can fish and relax. And it's going to be a park-like area. We're going to have 12 tiny houses okay. that are private and secluded. Um, they'll each have a hot tub. Nice. And um, we'll have what we call the cilantro room, which is cheers. Okay. And that's going to be where everyone comes together, and there's going to be like live music and a big fire pit, and awesome. you're going to have like you can have, you know, kind of like private dinners there, mm -hmm. not like restaurant private. Yeah, yeah. Or we can do like big group dinners, and um, we're going to have a yoga barn nice. where you can do yoga or exercise or yeah. maybe get a massage and yeah. there's going to be a pool and and then we're going to have our own private house out there too so our family house is going to be out there okay and we're going to have lots of animals which brian's always like oh man <laughs> but <laughs> that, that they take work animals do take work yeah that's awesome. so we're going to have lots of animals because that's what the kids are excited about too okay so. what about 10 years 10 years hopefully we're still doing the same thing i mean uh you know if my kids want to build a house out there too or you know we have some friends that are talking about building, yeah. you know maybe building out there too that would be amazing and hopefully we're still just you know having people out there and yeah uh, kind of building that community of foster and adopt support that's awesome so supporting the parents um was there a time when you felt unsupported i feel like we we were we were always we always had people that we could go to. Mm -hmm. I feel like there were a lot of times that it was so hard or so confusing or you just, you had never done something like that mm -hmm. before. You just, we just weren't great at reaching out sometimes. Yeah. And so you felt like you were alone. Yeah. And so, cause sometimes you can only take those foster kids to certain childcare, right? Yes. And so, um, for them to be, for those parents to be able to get away for maybe a weekend or a couple of days or a week if at most, to go out there and relax that's the goal to be supported right yes. and maybe just be refreshed and let them know that hey you're seen like we see you because yes. of what you're going through and maybe what no one else sees well the thing is is you know it's not going to be i mean they're still going to go back to their regular life yeah. but hopefully like you said they're going to go back a little bit renewed feeling a little more connected yeah. so they can keep doing the good work yeah so what do you need well we need funds okay. we need donations okay. uh, we need people that want to come out and like help us you know on the land yeah uh, do the things we need connections um all kinds of stuff awesome so what is your vision the vision yeah. is we are dedicated to offering a place of renewal and connection for parents of foster care and adoption i love that that's awesome and so um i just again i find it so interesting that this wasn't on your radar when you were 18, 19, 20, whatever. Yes. But how things, I guess how you were, how, how, how God worked in your life through those years, probably doing certain things that have come up or are coming up now because of what he's taking you through. And it's here, right? And this may not be the only thing that God does in your life as far as like, hey, this is, this is what you're about because it may be something else. But one of the books I was reading, again, The Last Arrow, I keep talking about it, by Irwin McManus, and he talks about when God speaks to you, you better shoot every arrow that he tells you to shoot because at the end, if you die with arrows in your, what is it called, shaft, that you, why would you die with arrows? Why? Because of fear, because of uncertainty, because what are other people going to think? But you want to die with none of those arrows, even if it's for a season of time that says, go build a foster ranch go start a restaurant, go whatever it is. And that's the thing that I keep wanting that I want people to hear from you is that you didn't see this on your radar. No. But when you had that passion and desire and purpose to go, this is what I think we should be doing, just go. Yes. Because what are, I guess, I think you would probably sit here with more regrets going, man, we didn't, we didn't move on that. We yeah. didn't adopt kids. Right. Right? Yes. 
and the ripple effect of your choice as a family has affected at least four families that I know of, and it hasn't been easy. No. Um, I do remember. I don't. I don't. I don't know if she's okay with me sharing this, but somebody I know. I remember I texted her husband and I said, "Hey, I'm gonna come pick you up for dinner." He's like, "Yeah, come on." So on the way over there, um, uh, it, it felt like they didn't have support, and I was always checking on them and just saying, "Hey, I'm here. I'm here." And it was as a friend, not as a pastor, because I hated that. I hated think I hate people thinking that I'm checking on them because I'm a pastor. Right. So I would check on them, just as friends. Hey, we're coming. I'm, how are you doing? And so I said, Hey, I'm gonna come over and take you for dinner. And, okay. And then I get a text halfway going, Hey, just stop at the front door. Don't come in. There's yelling going on, and one of our foster kids or one of our adopted kids is having a tough time, and they're screaming at the top of their lungs. My wife's outside, I'm outside, we're just letting her process. And just thinking through that to go, this child is confused, angry, hurt, and she's putting that on her foster family now and her adoptive family. And to hear that and go, how are you going to dinner with me when that's going on? And he just said, that happens all the time. And I'm like, son of a gun. He goes, do you gotta adjust and remember that there's a human in there that there's, there's the, that heart in there that you're trying to reach and it'll come out and it'll happen. You just gotta work through all this and this is just part of the process. Yes. And that is tough. Yes, it is. And that's why people need what you're trying to do. Yes, right? yes. Yeah, because those people, I mean, that's not an uncommon story. Yeah, that's crazy. Yes. Because I think of adoption, my naive mind at one point, not anymore, but was, oh, they just got adopted. Like, okay, that's their family now. Yes. And that's not it. And it's all going to be easy and fine. Yeah. No, because unfortunately they have trauma, mm -hmm. you know, that, that they have to heal through and, you know, it will take a long time. And it, and, and then being intermixed with your kids or whoever's yes. kids, you know what I'm saying? Like if I brought kids in here, I mean, it's going to affect my two daughters yes. and my wife and, and our relationship. Yes. Gosh. Yes. And that's, I want people to understand that that's why the ranch I don't even know how to say it. I'm trying to say it. Chilak. Chilak Ranch is so important because this whole motivate inspired me. It's inspiration to go, how can we have a ripple effect in someone's life that we don't even know by either giving, by showing up and working because they're given so much of who they are to these kids that just need a place to live and they need a second chance at life sometimes. Um, and it's not easy. So I love that because again, we know you guys, we know the Ramseys, we know the Tolbert's, we know some other people and, but we weren't in the house with you guys when all hell broke loose right. and, um, and it probably still does. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyways, I just, I want people to hear this is that made for more wants to just like we are, you know, we partner with slab, we partner with a guy in Midland that's about to launch a nonprofit as well. Um, and you don't hear a lot about these things, but the reason I bring you on here is to go, how can we help Mandy Sheehan and her family and her husband Ryan to go make this a, a little bit of a dent, whether it's people following on social media um, and just reaching your goal of followers, but to get the word out to say, hey, how can I get financially? So how can someone, like if they're listening right now and say, hey, I have 25 bucks, 300 bucks, a thousand dollars, how can they give? Sure, um, it's set up on the website. So just go to chilekrange.org and you can just click through giving. Awesome, and just so you guys know, Etienne is gonna tag that in the uh, notes. And then if you're listening to this on Sunday night, we'll put a post out on Monday or Tuesday or sometime this week that has a picture of Mandy and the uh, website and we'll make sure that we make it easy to get there, excuse me, and easy to give. And if you have questions, they can, contact you through sure. social media yeah right yeah or info at trilogy yeah um so yeah we're winding down um but that's where we're at we're, we're and, and then here's what i love is it's not about you right and i go back to what we say leadership is it made for more is it's it's um inspiration not manipulation because manipulation says how can i get out of you what i want inspiration says um uh, uh motivation and influence not I'm gonna lose my mind. So influence versus manipulation. In influence says, how can we do this together and affect people's lives? Manipulation says, how can I manipulate their lives to get what I want? And I love that it's influence because it's a group of people already going, we see the vision, we see this, we see those 
things that you can do and we want to support that and so that's what the make for more community is all about um and so before we go i have a few questions but events do you guys do events to raise money and things like that yes so um we are going to be hosting an event at the um, towards the end of this year mm -hmm. for um for supporters and for foster and ad adopt families it's going to okay. be super casual it's going to be family friendly and we'll um we can give you some more information you'll see that come up on our website here okay. um through social media right. in the next couple of weeks and then next year we're going to have a big um fundraising event it's going to be um like a kind of like a tasting thing yeah. um where you can kind of meet everybody you'll hear yeah. like the vision and um, we'll have some speakers and then we're going to do hopefully a golf tournament awesome and um, yeah and so next year our goal for um you know the, ori the original plan was we're going to build out this ranch and we're going to have people come and that is the goal but mm -hmm. it's going to take a while oh yeah there's a lot of things to build yeah yeah and there's a lot of cedar trees yeah <laughs> that we have to manage yeah um but so we realized that we really need to keep we need to start doing stuff now while we can. Mm -hmm. So our plan is to, um, with the funds that are given, we're going to host families in Fredericksburg, and we've partnered awesome. with an organization there. Um, and they will go out and kind of still do the same type of thing mm -hmm. that they'll do when they come to the ranch. So we're going to yeah. try to host, you know, four um, couples or you know single parents and a friend yeah. or however they want to do it um, in Fredericksburg for one week in a month. And then they'll spend the weekend, they'll be doing some activities, they'll do things, you know, privately, and then they'll do things, you know, as a group. Yeah. And then we'll get to meet them out there too with that. So we'll also be hosting family events so we can get to know the community out there. We also are going to support the community here in Austin and around Austin. That's awesome. And then we'll also um, hopefully be able to support some of the social workers and caseworkers. That's great. So, guys, y'all make sure that you click on the notes, check out the website. Make sure you give support where you can. And if you're interested in fostering or adopt, you can contact Mandy. But um, also just, uh, again, become aware of the, again, the statistics, the needs. And um, I would think that when you see a family uh, that is either, you know, multiracial or whatever to go, and there's a story behind it, because every one of our family has stories. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so. All that aside, I think you did a great job. Thank you. Right? So we're going to have some fun questions real quick. Um, number one, what if, so let's say you were a WWE superstar wrestler, Mandy Sheehan, is about to walk out, and they ask you, what song do you want to be played? What is your, what is your, okay, or you're on the Peloton, and you're, <laughs> you're, you're getting tired, and they go, hey, you got another mile to go. What is your go-to, um, like, hype song? Okay, I... I'm terrible with music. <laughs> okay, but what song? You gotta pick one. I don't know. Can I come back to that? Let me think about it. <laughs> can, I, can I phone a friend? <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, okay, so think about it, but is it, uh, do you listen to hip hop, rock? What, what do you listen to? I don't really listen to rock. I would say I listen to hip hop because that's just kind of, I, I still listen to the radio. Um, yeah, I don't. <laughs> we, I get in my car after my wife's been driving it, and I'm like, why the freak is the radio on? Please, yes. I don't want to hear anybody talk. I don't want to hear anything anyways. Okay, like you that. know what? I'm going to go with Dua Lipa. Okay, I don't know what that is. What? Oh, sorry. I don't. <laughs> that was a Tiana. Okay. Yes. What is I love her songs. It's a girl. Oh, okay. I took that. <laughs> okay. That's like we other when we interviewed my wife and I said her her favorite artist was Easy E and she goes, Who's Easy E? Like, yeah, no, that's not. So what's the name? Dua Lipa. Dua Lipa? Yeah, you've definitely heard her song. Okay. Okay. That's my wife and Ashley are laughing at me. That's cool. Um okay, so that's kind of your hype song. All right, cool. Um favorite um like your your maybe your your favorite movie of all time? Favorite movie of all time. Um, if you have top three, you can name top three. Yeah. Um, there's so many. Well, one that you go, I would. We watch this. I would watch this over and over again. The Notebook. Oh, oh gosh. Okay. I love that movie. Yeah. Um, Ten Cup. Ten Cup. Okay. Okay. I can go with that one. I love Ten Cup. That's good. Um, <laughs> 
such a funny movie. And you know, I actually did read that they said that they wrote that more for the women. Really? Yeah. Wow. Have you all seen Tim Cup? Okay. Excellent. Y'all okay, well, yeah, need to go watch it. Um, and then another movie that I mean, I love. Uh, I mean, any kind of like rom com. Yeah. I'm trying to think. Um, okay. Do you are you a uh, are you a Ben Stiller fan? If you don't know who he is, okay. What about Will Ferrell? Yeah. Okay. I'm just curious because there's some people that you can say Will Ferrell and they'll say mm, no. You say Ben Stiller and they're like yes or Adam Sandler. Oh, I love Adam Sandler. There you go. That's what I'm saying. That kind of comedy. It, and then you can say, like, uh, Jack Black. And it's totally different types. And then you can say Kevin Hart. And they're going, okay, that's raunchy. That's funny. That's good humor for the family. And, like, anyways, wherever you land, you can tell. Okay, I bet you Manny would watch this movie. Have you ever watched Mean Girls? Yes. Was it Adina? Was it Adina that said she'd never watch Mean Girls? Somebody did. Mm-hmm. That I was like, are you freaking kidding me? That's the first I'm ever a chick flick. That's the only one I say is probably my top five or six uh, movies of all time that I, I did. So. I mean, Bridesmaids is so funny. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> I it's like so that. Embarrassing. But I know, I know. I don't have you watched it. Okay, there's a few that I'm like, yeah, I, <laughs> I I think it's funny. I love it. What's your top movie? Top like number one? Yeah. Uh, Three hundred. Okay. And Braveheart. So it's Three Hundred Braveheart, uh, Thirteen Hours, American Sniper. Um, those are all good movies. Yeah. yeah, and Mean Girls is up there because <laughs> I, I just love those. This it, they're all in Saturday Night Live, so I grew up watching Saturday Night Live when it was good. And um, and so, anyways, um, I love anything with Reese Witherspoon. Okay, Sweet Home Alabama. Love it. Okay, that was one of our like movies that we still have it on DVD. She was actually going through the DVDs. We're like, who's who has DVDs? <laughs> oh, but I we, do need to add one. I'm sorry. Go Ever ahead. after. Oh my gosh, there you go. We have that DVD too. Yes, I love yeah. that movie. Every When I first met Jamie, that's all she freaking watched was that movie. And I was like, seriously? <laughs> yeah, um, I walked to remember. We can keep so going. There you go. Sparks. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So there was one movie that I just lost it in the movie theater that I was like so embarrassed. Like I had to duck, keep my head down, remember? And we went to the apartment. I think we were married at that point um, because I just lost it. Like I couldn't control myself because I was crying so much. It was with. Um, Homeboy that plays on freaking Magic Mike. What's his freaking name? Mm-hmm. Channing Tatum. And he was at the bow where mm-hmm. he dies or comes back. He, he can't remember. Someone loses their memory. He loses his memory. Remember, we're at the freaking theater. It was Rachel McAdams, Channing Tatum. Tatum. She loses her. No, I, I know. She loses her memory. Oh, yeah. He's, he, and he has to like try to make her fall back in love with the and idea. And she doesn't. And I oh, spoiler alert. <laughs> but, and so I was sitting there going, but here's what's funny about movies. I don't even know why we're talking about this. But I think when I've read Bra- uh, Wild at Heart by John Eldridge, every movie I think speaks to you. I mean, I don't, I don't know about comedies, but but some of these speak to a deeper part in your heart where you go, son of a gun, what if that would have happened? I mean, when I tell my wife, hey, <laughs> peace, or what, you can't remember me, or I can't remember you. Anyways, it just is crazy. Because on that note, I'm sitting here going, okay, she forgot him. But then you look at 50 First Dates, and I'm like, I, okay, I would rather go with 50 First Dates, <laughs> because, yeah. Because anyways. it ends well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the, the brother cracks me up that he's always pumping iron and steroids, oh but and he has a list. Um, Mandy, uh, so you have your favorite song, movie, anything else that you would tell anybody else that, that we, maybe we just haven't uh, mentioned? Sure. Um, I mean, like you said, if you are interested in fostering or adopting, uh, please contact me. I have a lot of options for you to um, get involved with that. Uh, There's always support. There's a lot of organizations in Austin that you can support children and organizations through foster care and adoption. Um, If you would like to support Tyler Ranch, we would love that. Um, Social media, um, you you can come out to the ranch and help us out there, volunteers for our events. And um, I've you know, in the end, I feel like, like you were saying, if God prompts you to do something, just do it. Yeah. What's That's the best awesome. way to contact you? Um, you can contact me through social media or just through email. Okay. What's your email? It's mandy at childhoodranch.org. There you go. If you need to learn how to spell it, just go back to when she spelled it earlier and write it down. T-E-A-G-H-L-A-C-H <laughs> branch.org. There you go. Dot org. Um, yeah. Any, anything y'all have? 
Um, yeah, I appreciate you for coming on. I know you were nervous. I love that, um, again, we've known each other. We've worked together. Um, we've gone to a dinner. What was that place that we went to dinner with them? There was a, we had a steak. Was it Eddie Beats? Was it Eddie Beats at the domain? Uh -huh. yeah, or, uh, yeah, at yeah, Arboretum. Arboretum, mm -hmm. yeah. That was, that's still one of the best steaks that I had. Um, but no, I appreciate you. I appreciate what you're doing and following your heart because this is what the Made For More community is all about and just supporting people, um, your family, love your, you, yeah, your kids are awesome. Um, they are awesome. They, they are. They're all talented yes, equally, yeah. like in their yes. own way. Um, but yeah, just, I appreciate you sharing your story with us. Well, thanks for asking because yeah. it was, it was really great. Yeah, and I want you to be able to share this with people that want to hear about your story and how, where you're at and what they can do. So we'll make sure that we can share all this with you and you can share it. Um, guys, If uh, as we wrap up here, I would just say, you know, just continue to support uh, by sharing and uh, going on and hitting. Y'all still didn't freaking leave a review. There are no more new reviews. Adina said she was gonna do it and y'all were. So all you gotta do is go to iTunes or wherever you listen to your freaking podcast and just hit uh, write a review or five stars. Um, so please go do that. Um, the next book that we're going to be going over, make sure you go buy it. It's Dichotomy of Leadership by Leif Babin and Jocko Willink. Looking forward to that. Um, the social medias, make sure you follow us. There is a hat still available. Mandy picked out the gray shirt. There's also the first edition still available. And then Etienne is working on a, uh, did I say what it was last week? No, I didn't. I said it to us. Yeah, so you guys were working on a new design. It's going to be legit. So make sure that you keep an eye out for that. Um, I felt like I was going to say something. One more thing that Mandy brought up that I thought was funny when it, and this is totally probably inappropriate. Um, when it came to uh, the whole, um, when you see a diverse family, Mexican and white, and the things that go through your head, <clears throat> so I don't know why I just got a phone call about this today so about uh, 2015 you got jacked in the face with a water bottle my wife did a teenager threw a freaking water bottle across the room after I had said stop she happened to look in the direction it was coming and hit her right in the face right in the eye and she falls I come in there and I'm like who the freak is laying on the floor and I realize it's my wife and I go what I just I guess the look in my face made as soon as I said what happened? These te the teenager boys just started crying, and they're they're teenage boys. Your was her daughter there? Her daughter was in the band, wasn't she? Uh, uh, Mandy, uh, Maddie. Yeah. I thought Maddie was in the band, and when we had it back in the garage. Anyways, she was. Yeah. So she got jacked in the face. She's crying, and I go, "Who? What happened here?" No one would answer. They're all froze. So I said, "What happened?" And the boys started crying, and then uh, she got up. She had a big old knot. So we go to the emergency room, and this doesn't cross my mind because I'm not. I don't, I, I'm not, I don't think I'm racist. I've just never thought that. I'm going to try to get my wife help. Well, we walk in the emergency room, Mexican dude, white wife. She has a black eye and I'm going, I didn't think through anything. Well, then they said, sir, can we ask your wife some questions separately or whatever? I'm like, what the freak's going on? Well, then we get back together and I guess our stories had to match. And I was like, they really thought that I hit you? I was like, that's so crazy. Anyways, that came, that made me think about the whole yeah, what racial. Yeah, yeah, what people wonder. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. And how, why didn't they think that she started? If, <laughs> so, anyways, uh, guys, uh, we appreciate you guys listening all the way through this. Um, but honestly, like uh, Mandy was saying, you know, go after what you're, what you, uh, what God's prompting you to do. Uh, don't, um, don't give up. And this is why we end every week and we'll do it again. So remember, you exist for more. You're here to offer more. Don't ever give up. Every single one of us is made for more. Later. Cool. All right, YouTube. Thanks for joining us. Your ears are probably sweating, Mandy. Um, it's not normal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe you left your earrings on. Adina usually takes them off. Uh, guys, I hope you guys have a great week. Go follow Mandy. Go support them. And go give us a five-star review wherever you listen to the podcast. Or on YouTube. Later.